Matthew Vaughn is back with a new movie that has everyone asking, who is the real Agent Argyle? Spoiler alert, it's me. This video is brought to you by Rocket Money. Stop wasting money on things you don't use at rocketmoney.com slash Dan today and stay tuned after the video for more info. Hello everybody, I'm Dan Merle here with my review of the new Matthew Vaughn movie Argyle. Pardon my slight huskiness, I'm getting over a bit of a cold, but that's not enough to stop me from reviewing this movie, which is Matthew Vaughn's first film since 2021's pandemic delayed The King's Man. It's from writer Jason Fuchs, who also wrote the screenplays for Pan and Ice Age, Continental Drift, amongst other films. Bryce Dallas Howard plays Ellie Conway, the author of a hugely successful series of spy novels starring a secret agent named Argyle, played in sequences from the book by Henry. Cavill. But as she attempts to finish her latest novel, Ellie is intercepted by a real spy, played by Sam Rockwell, who's tasked with protecting her from an evil intelligence agency led by Brian Cranston, who wants to know why her novels are able to predict real-world events. That's the setup, at least, but Argyle is not really content with sticking with one premise for too long. The first half of the movie is meant to confuse you, and the second half of the movie is meant to throw so many twists your way that you never quite feel like you're on balance. There are so many twists and turns that this movie throws at you, especially in the last half, that eventually it trains you not to trust anybody or anyone or anything that you see on screen. And for some people, that's exhilarating, but for me, it was exhausting. It was the cinematic equivalent of Michael Scott when he's describing having to have his vasectomies reversed back and forth. Snip, snap, snip, snap, snip, snap. That's what I felt like this movie was doing to me. And every time it threw something new at me, I just checked out a little bit more and a little bit more until by the last 15, 20 minutes or so, I was just kind of waiting for it to end. There are lots of ways to set up intrigue and mystery in a movie and say, well, here's a character, but here's something you didn't know about them, or here's something you didn't know about this world. There are a lot of movies that I love that are set up like this. There are a lot of movies that Matthew Vaughn has done that are set up like this that I like, but the execution here is not good. If it was physically possible, I would have thought that the screenplay was being written in real time as the movie was playing, and that fresh pages were just being acted out, you know, getting ahead of the train on the train tracks. It almost felt improvisational in a bad way. Henry Cavill's Argyle is probably the most prominent case here. The movie never really decides what it wants to do with him all the way to the end of the movie, which ends on a mystifying note and then sets up a movie that's even more confusing. It seems like Matthew Vaughn has some sort of an aspiration to set up an Argyle cinematic universe, and if he wanted to do that, I would have just skipped this whole meta movie altogether and put Henry Cavill in his own actual Argyle film. I love the sequences of the movie where he's playing the secret agent, but there are so few of them in the film and then they don't really know what to do with them throughout the rest of the movie. What Matthew Vaughn basically had here was Henry Cavill as James Bond, but not going through all the rigmarole of having him actually cast as James Bond just use him in that role because he's great in the little bit of the movie in which he really gets to do that. Cavill's wasted, and I think a lot of the other supporting cast is wasted as well, including Brian Cranston, who's the head of the evil agency. It appears the only direction he was given for the entire movie was Snarl. Catherine O'Hara plays Ellie's mother. Dua Lipa's in a role that's just big enough for the movie to use her name for publicity. Ariana DeBose and John Cena are in throwaway supporting roles. And Samuel L. Jackson plays an ally who mostly gets to sit in a chair in one room. And listen, nice work if you can get it. There's also The Cat, which is the centerpiece of the film's marketing. The Cat is very cute when it's not horrendously computer animated. And it's not just the cat, the visual effects all around are just generally bad. And I get it, Matthew Vaughn has a very heightened reality sort of aesthetic, and I think that he used that well in a lot of his other films. But when you look at the effects in this movie, it's not cartoonish looking, it's cheap looking. And there is a difference between those two. There are a lot of scenes that aren't action at all, but are just people in front of cityscapes or outside in different surroundings that are obviously green screened. And listen, I know that this was a movie that was made in the 2021-2022 COVID era, and so maybe it was a necessity to shoot people more isolated than you would usually, but that doesn't mean that it has to look cheap. That doesn't excuse the poor execution of what may have been some difficult circumstances. The two who come off best in the movie are Sam Rockwell and Bryce Dallas Howard. I guess you'd call them the two leads, and that's really where the the core of the film is those two characters what's your problem with my cat exactly he's really cute he's cuddly he's oh, loyal please he's kind. you suddenly drop dead that cat's chewing your ears off within 48 hours max and if the movie didn't keep snapping its fingers around and trying to distract us for the entire running time then they could have gotten something going but every time argyle builds up momentum one way it throws you in a different direction which completely kills that momentum and really leaves you with not much at the end of the movie 
It's been said that Argyle carries a $200 million budget, which is not true. Apple did pay $200 million to acquire the film, which included production costs as well as the necessary royalties, franchise rights, etc. But at any budget, Argyle is a big swing and a big miss. And I hate to say that because I've been a fan of Matthew Vaughn's movies. I've liked nearly every one that he's made prior to this one, even ones that other people haven't liked that much. But I think this is the worst example of his style and his substance. And the PG-13 rating doesn't really help here either because that super cartoonish violence that Matthew Vaughn has done so well in movies like Kingsman is completely neutered in Argyle. I don't know if the rating was his call or if it was Apple's call to try to make it more marketable, but it was a bad call. And Argyle is just the latest example of peak content spending hitting theaters. We had this movie, which was bought in 2021 for $200 million. We had the Exorcist films from Universal. They paid $400 million to make movies they didn't even know what they were going to do with. Netflix paid over $400 million for two Knives Out films that they don't even want to give a decent theatrical release to. And following Killers of the Flower Moon and Napoleon, this is the third $200 million Apple project to hit theaters in recent months. And I found all of them to have basically the same problems to varying degrees. Number one, they're all too long. And number two, they're creatively muddled. They're directionless in some ways in how they want to tell their stories. These movies will likely lose Apple hundreds of millions of dollars at the box office, which I've been told isn't important to a company that big, but something tells me that even Apple won't continue to pump this much money into projects like this forever, and I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. Argyle is the kind of movie that needed a producing studio or a producing partner along with Matthew Vaughn that could provide some guidance and input. It's not the kind of movie that needed a blank check so that they could do whatever they wanted. That's what this movie feels like, and I don't think that that's what the movie needed. There are some interesting directions that Argyle could have taken. There are some possible interesting directions that I guess it could take in the future, but they all collide in this movie and really none of it works. When I'm rating it on my personal scale, I think some people will like it for its action elements and it does have some good performances. So I'm going to put it at not a fan. I'm not going to tell you to stay away from the movie, but I certainly didn't come away with a whole lot from it. But what do you think? Are you excited about finding out who the real Agent Argyle is and what the future of the Argyle cinematic universe might be? Let me know down in the comments below. And before we go, I'm going to thank the sponsor for this video, Rocket Money. With so many streaming services out there today, it's not unusual for people to decide that they just don't want to subscribe to everything every single month. But have you ever tried to keep track of all those different streaming services? Which one you're signed up for? Which ones you're not signed up for? Which ones have you forgotten about? Well, you can solve that problem today with Rocket Money, which doesn't just keep track of your subscriptions, but will also cancel them for you and alert you to an increase in subscription price. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I thought I knew exactly what I was subscribed to every single month, but I was shocked for the first few weeks that I used Rocket Money, and I canceled subscriptions that added up to over $50 a month, stuff that I'd been charged for sometimes for years that I had just lost track of. I can see everything I subscribe to in one place, and if I don't want it, I can cancel it with just one tap. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions today by going to rocketmoney.com slash Dan. That's rocketmoney.com slash Dan. Rocketmoney.com slash Dan. Thanks so much to Rocket Money for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. Be sure to stay tuned right here for the latest in movie news, reviews, box office, and more. Until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you then.